One of Fallout's most notable pieces of technology is the Robco Pip-Boy. It makes its appearance in every Fallout game. According to the Vault Dweller Survival Guide, PIP or PIP is an acronym given to it by its manufacturers, Robco Industries, and stands for Personal Information Processor. It was allegedly equipped with the latest and greatest of Robco's processing technologies, boasting ultra-modern, super-deluxe resolution graphics in conjunction with its ability to store and transfer large amounts of information. The Pip-Boy was also impressively small by the standards of pre-war computers. It is generally powered by an internal fission battery and is even equipped with its own proprietary operating system named Pip-OS. Pip-Boys were generally standard issue to all Vault Tech Corporation vaults. Each vault personnel and resident were meant to use them. But before they were given out to residential members, the overseer would host orientation seminars that would explain the basic functions and how it was to enhance the daily life for the residents. They then had to fill out answers on a PIP responsibility form to show us details such as hand dominance, arm circumference, and vault tech jumpsuit measurements. Different variations of this device were issued between vaults. Differences between these variants included the ability to support additions and equipment that other models could not. This hints that even though Robco was the original manufacturer, other companies had the ability to produce and equip them with their own hardware upgrades. Usage of the Pip-Boy was not exclusive to Vault Tech, however. Some Free State members in Appalachia also used them as well. We also know that Robco autocaches even required Pip-Boys to access their inventories. Although these are the only groups mentioned to use the Pip-Boy, I would not be surprised if other groups employed their use as well. Another group that could have used them was the pre-war US military. When the player steps inside of a suit of power armor in Fallout 4, we can see that the Pip-Boy HUD is displayed within the helmet. This is just speculation though. There is no information stating that the military's power armor users were issued Pip-Boys pre-war. Now let's continue to the different variants and models of the Pip-Boy. The earliest known prototype was developed in the mid-21st century and is known as the Pip-Boy 1.0. This version had a small display screen, a 16-button keyboard, a power toggle switch, multiple indicator lights, and a dial for three unspecified settings. The device covered the entire length of the forearm and had a massive diameter compared to later models. This version was clearly not meant for commercial use as there are numerous wires and cables protruding from the device in several locations, as well as exposed connections and circuit boards. Robco likely had this developed as a proof of concept to explore the idea of portable computational devices. The next variant chronologically is the Pip-Boy 2000, a huge step up from its predecessor. It is also the first Pip-Boy we were introduced to in the Fallout game series. It is worn by the Vault Dweller, the Chosen One, and a modified version is used by the Warrior. Small by pre-war standards, the Pip-Boy 2000 is still extremely bulky and cumbersome. It utilized the most modern hardware at the time having cathode ray tube monitors and green monochrome to achieve the highest resolution possible for its display. This model sports a black 5x3 inch monochrome screen, has a built-in video and audio recording device, as well as a simple but dependable form of sonar and satellite tracking that enabled the creation of map models of areas traveled by the user. There are also several buttons and panels on the Pip-Boy main screen. These are labeled status, auto maps, archives, clothes, and clues. Status contained information about the current quest and holodisk memory. Auto maps includes maps and the names of undiscovered locations. Archives was used to access recorded video messages. Clothes was used to power down the Pip-Boy. And the clues button we see is damaged beyond repair. During gameplay, there is also an interface bar that has buttons which allow the player to access all necessary functions of the device the skill decks panel that displays all the active skills requiring a target to use, INV which is used to access the inventory, MAP to open the local map, this will also display all living characters if the motion sensor is in an active slot, and lastly the CHA button will open the character screen. The character screen contains the owner's Vault Tech personal record, a summary of their skills, traits, injuries past and present, faction reputation, and even the number of foes the user has disposed of. 
This was also the device that was awarded the initial contract to provide each vault tech industry shelter employee, as well as designated dwellers with their own personal pit boy. vault tech was enamored by the multitude of functions this device could perform. Some functions included, but were not limited to, tracking the current status of the user's assignments, generating automatic maps of the local area, recording audio and video for later playback, and keeping track of important dates and events. While commercial models had the alarm clock offered as an optional feature, all Pip-Boys manufactured for vault had included it as standard. Other features included cabling for external Watts CU motion sensors, a holodisc reader, and even the ability to play games on the latest models. Additional add-ons compatible with the Pip-Boy 2000 were the answer console and memory enhancers. They were designed to transfer information from an optic flash to the user's brain. This acted as a way to extend the user's knowledge on certain subjects. These range from dictionaries and encyclopedias to more exotic lingual and medical enhancers. Though one major downside to having all these functions was upkeep required to keep their reliability to vault Tech strict standards. This was even known by its manufacturers as Robco had only offered a maximum 3 month warranty for any purchases made of the device. This became clear to many vault Tech personnel very quickly and many of them opted to acquire later models even if their vault systems were not compatible with the newer hardware. Despite these flaws, some Pip-Boy 2000 models still operate decades later and are considered to be extremely valuable due to their utility and functionality. One cool note I also found was that the Pip-Boy 2000 would also greet you with holiday messages on the main screen for certain major holidays. These are on New Year's, Valentine's, April Fool's, Independence Day, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Before moving on to the next Pip-Boy series, it's also worth covering the Pip-Boy 2000 Mark VI. This model was issued to each dweller from Vault 76 while leaving their vault, with the goal of rebuilding Appalachia 25 years after the Great War. It has four primary sections that are used for the following. Stat is an overview of the user's general health, physical well-being, and capabilities. Towards the bottom of the screen, the player's current and total HP progress towards next level, and current and total AP are displayed. The item tab contains a complete list of what the user has in their inventory, which is broken into further subsections as new, weapons, armor, apparel, food slash drink, aid, miscellaneous, hollow, notes, junk, mods, and ammo. The data tab has a section view that displays quests that the wearer has accepted. These quests can be deactivated and reactivated at the user's preference, and completed quests are shown in a darker hue to differentiate them from active ones. And finally, the radio tab. Can you guess what this one's used for? This is also the first variant produced with a built-in Geiger counter. Why they didn't think to have them installed on the original 2000 model is beyond me, but I feel like having a Geiger counter in the event of a nuclear war would have been more than an afterthought. But enough of Robco's L's, let's talk about one of their dubs, with my personal favorite, the Pip-Boy 3000A. If you were introduced to the series when Fallout 3 and New Vegas came around, then this is probably the one you're most familiar with. The A in 3000A indicates that there are other versions of this Pip-Boy as well, A being the oldest. But don't let that fool you, this version is as capable as any of the later ones but it is the first to allow the user to choose between four different colors for display, those being amber, blue, green, and white. It is also the first Pip-Boy equipped with a green light. Sadly though, the user cannot change this color. This variant is also secured around the wrist like a gauntlet and has a biometric seal. Although it seems like it's able to be bypassed as Doc Mitchell gives you his in the beginning of Fallout New Vegas. Like I said, the Pip-Boy 3000 is used in Fallout 3 and New Vegas. There are a few differences between them, so I'm going to describe the Fallout 3 version, then afterwards, I'll explain the differences between it and the New Vegas version. The functions on this variant include stats, items, and data. The stats tab is broken into several sub-tabs that include status, special, skills, perks, and general. Status displays the user's condition, radiation levels, and any other active effects. Each of these are labeled as C and D for condition, 
RAD for radiation, and EFF for effects. Condition covers things like crippled status of your limbs, a quick view to see how many stem packs you currently have in your inventory, and the ability to apply these stem packs to either individual limbs or the entire body. Radiation shows what radiation level your body is at, and similarly to condition, will allow you to quickly administer Radex or Radaway. Effects displays the modifiers from clothing, radiation, chems, your crippled limbs, and any addictions the player is currently experiencing. The next sub-tab, the Special tab, includes information on the player's special stats, as well as any positive or negative modifiers to them. The Skills tab performs the exact same role, but for skills. The Perks tab includes a list of the player's chosen perks. And the General tab provides the user with a rough indication of their karma level, as well as information on the user's actions. These actions range from quests completed to corpses eaten. Interesting stat that vault Tech decided to program in, but I guess their experiments have tested much worse things. Now onto the Items tab. This tab is fairly simple and lists all of the items in your inventory and subcategorizes them into weapons, apparel, aid, miscellaneous, and ammo. Each of the items is also given a short description, just in case you were wondering why a gnome was in your inventory. Appropriate items are also given a condition, damage, damage resistant, weight, value, and effect stat. Some extra information while being on the items tab includes current and maximum weight, current and maximum hit points, and the number of bottle caps the player has. And finally, we move on to the data tab. It is subcategorized to include the local map, world map, quests, notes, and radio. Some important things to note about this tab is that the player can use the world map to fast travel between any discovered location while not inside of a building or near enemies. Interestingly, having the radio on does not affect your sneak while in-game, so you can listen to all the Taylor Swift you want and no one will judge. But sadly, using the new built-in light does increase your visibility. Even having it on during the daytime will decrease your stealth capabilities. With that out of the way, let's look at the differences between Fallout 3 and New Vegas. In New Vegas, the default interface color is set to the amber preset instead of green, although the green light still remains. The stats menu will also include a page to show the courier what their individual faction standings are with each group, assuming they have met them. Each weapon in the items tab now has a mod option to apply compatible mods to each weapon, along with the repair option. The world map now shows reputation with each location that is controlled by a faction. While playing hardcore mode, the stats page includes an extra tab to show dehydration, starvation, and sleep deprivation. But we can't move on from this version of the Pip-Boy just yet. The Jewel of Freeside, the Pip-Boy 3 Billion, is a modification of the original Pip-Boy 3000A. Its handcrafted gold plating and encrusted diamond exterior lets everyone around know that you're not to be trifled with. It can be obtained at Mick and Ralph's in the Freeside if you are able to convince the Omertas to continue buying weapons from them. Upon request, the player can have Mick change the device out between the Pimp Boy and the Poor Boy but I don't know why anyone would ever want to take off this masterpiece. On a side note, if the player chose the Wild Wasteland perk, then disco music will soothe your ears every time it's equipped. Now it's time to move on to the Pip-Boy 3000 Mark IV. It is the fourth generation of the 3000 series and has improved in a multitude of ways. The control dials were relocated from the left to the right hand side of the device to improve accessibility. Sorry left handed users, your days of pit boy dominance are now over. The wrist lock has also been replaced with a simple latching mechanism, so no more having to override those pesky biometric locks. It also has a brand new display interface that supports animations. This enables the device to be used as a portable gaming console to play hit classics such as Atomic Command and Red Menace. Hey, this is editing me here. I also wanted to mention that the 3000 Mark IV was not the first Pip-Boy with the ability to play games on the go. The Pip-Boy 2000 Mark VI in Fallout 76 is also able to play games. Sorry for missing that. The Mark IV is also the first in the Pip-Boy line that is able to manually unlock the main entrances to Vault Tech vaults. 
It was primarily distributed to vaults near Boston, including vaults 75, 81, 95, 111, and 114. Vault 111 did not issue Pip-Boys to its residents, as they were to be placed in cryostasis chambers and would not need them. As previously mentioned, this version of the Pip-Boy is also compatible with the onboard display of power armor via a HUD-like visor display. Another notable change is that the Mark IV also allows for configurable foreground color. There are still built-in presets, but the user may change the color values to have it exactly match their preferences. The primary menu options in the Mark IV include Stat, Inventory, Data, Map, and Radio. The Stat section displays the user's statistics similarly as the previous version. One of the changes made to this version is that the addition of resistances being displayed. The Inventory section is also very similar to its predecessor and is sorted into the subcategories of Weapons, Apparel, Aid, Miscellaneous, Junk, mods, and ammo. While the Mark IV is an upgraded version of the 3000A, it does not have the same keychain functions and is susceptible to key clutter in the miscellaneous tab. The data tab is divided into quests, workshop, and stats. The quest tab displays quests similarly as they were before, but with an added list of miscellaneous quests that are not quite categorized as full-on quests. Workshops is a new addition that allows the user to access statistics of their settlements throughout the Commonwealth. Some of these stats include happiness, food and water production, and defense level. The stats tab functions as a one-person leaderboard showing trivial in-game statistics. These statistics are broken down into general, quest, combat, crafting, and crime, as if there are laws to break in post-war America. The map menu is able to display the usual world and local maps and even has the ability to show supply line routes between settlements. And finally, the radio is no longer in the data menu, and stations each get their own tab. If the user is outside of the broadcast range of any radio signals, then it will appear grayed out and not be selectable. And as stated previously, Robco finally decided to change the color of the gloomy green light to be whatever color the user has selected as their foreground color. Another new addition is the adapter plug. This is the modification that enables the user to open and close vault doors. It also allows the user to perform diagnostics on power armor, and with the robotic experts perk, the user can use it to gain control of robots. Overall, the Mark IV is undoubtedly the most advanced Pip-Boy we have seen to date. It takes all of the lessons of Robco, vault Tech, and, most importantly, all of the Fallout developers have learned throughout the years and makes an almost seamless management system. Although I do wish there was an official pimp version of the Mark IV as well. This completes the current evolution of the Robco Pip-Boy that we see in all the Fallout games. Let me know down below in the comments if you learned anything new and what details I may have missed out on them. Anyways, thank you for listening, and as always, please like and subscribe for more content.